to receive that which the Lord has deposited into his servant, the anointed apostle out. Look out. Let us connect today. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God is good. All the time. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Give Jesus Christ the loudest praise you have. Glory awesome to Jesus. Jesus. Hey, Hallelujah. Hey, there, is, there is something called expectation. My God. It is a clear evidence of what is known as faith. With that faith, there will be no expectation. Mm -mm. Right. And in expectation... You anticipate. Yes. You will not anticipate outside your expectation. And the degree of your anticipation is directly linked to your expectation. Amen. So if you expect this much, your anticipation toward it will be accordingly. Amen. Now, with all its ingredient, the Bible says... Without faith that gives us that expectation that is demonstrated, to, demonstrated by our anticipation, it is, a, it is impossible to please God. Amen. Right. So meaning that if you have to please God, you have to have faith. Yes. Amen. It will be seen through expectation as you anticipate something. Now, to anticipate something is to go ahead mm. of the manifestation. Woo. My Amen. God. My God. Hey. See, in anticipation, you, you take a step. Mm. You will see somebody who is still broken, but jumping, you know, more than those who seems to be fine. Hey. Is anticipating Anticipate. something. Fine. Are you hearing me? You, you, you will see somebody who seemingly is in pain, but is jumping, praising God over the healing that has not yet manifested as if it was manifested Amen. because such a person is standing on faith. Mm. Are you hearing me? Now, there are people who will never miss the miracle and there are people who will always repeatedly miss the miracles. It doesn't go with the altar, the preacher, or even God. It always goes to the level of the faith. Amen. Amen. With that faith, you can please God Mm -mm. Faith Amen. is the hand that received from him. You must have faith. Amen. You must have faith. faith. You must have faith. faith. God honors faith. Yes. God honors, honors faith. faith. That's why faith will never disappoint you. Amen. Faith will never disappoint I you. I receive it. So there are people who will never miss the miracle. I receive it. It is impossible for them. Why? Because they are so aligned, so tuned in their faith that uh, before they see the million dollar in their account, they're giving God a $10 million praise. Amen. Woo. Ah, are, you, are you getting what I'm trying to communicate this morning? Before they have in their hand the $1 million seed, they are already thanking God over what they have not seen yet. Amen. There is not yet a ring in your finger, but the way you praise him, God. Oh, yes. Are you hearing? So you will see the anticipate. You know, I, 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 don't, I don't have as much as you, but I will not beg. Amen. Why? I will not stretch my hand and beg. Why? Because in anticipation, I see myself as a master millionaire. Hey, is there a Malta millionaire in this house? Is there a man or woman who's blessed by the Lord? Is there anybody who knows that he knows that he's blessed? Can I hear you? Can I hear you? Is there anybody who's blessed? Is there anybody who's blessed? Blessed by the best, with the best, for the best. Who am I talking to? Who am I talking to? Somebody receive this word.
Hallelujah. Woo! Woo! By anticipation, I demonstrate my expectation because I stand on faith. Mm. If you believe, you will see the glory of God. Amen. Amen. I said, if you believe, you will see the glory of God. It doesn't matter what the devil throws you away. If you believe, you will see the glory of God. Somebody will see the glory of God today. So if you believe, you will see the glory of God. I receive it. You see, now, when somebody is aligned with God in faith, it is not difficult for him to miss, miss a miracle. It is literally impossible. Oh, yes. mm -hmm. Meaning that there is no avenue mm -mm. for him to miss his miracle. The greatest mm -hmm. ingredient mm -hmm. is faith. Yes. But there are people, unfortunately, who may be in the midst of greatness and still miss it. Mm. My you know why? Because of lack of faith. faith. God help us. They try to draw attention in the natural realm and even in the spiritual realm through self-pity. Jesus. Lord in Christ. They express what they go through. They express the pain they have. Mm. You can see disappointment and despair all over them. They seem to feel like as they stand all broken before God, saying, oh God, you know my problem, that God will answer. They fail to understand that the God who serve does not answer pity. No. God does not answer by pity. Mm -mm. Right. God answers faith. faith. Yes. Amen. He faith. answers faith. Faith. Amen. The currency is faith. Now, I'm trying to tell somebody who may be watching me live, somebody who's present here in the overflows, make a shift. Oh, yes. Make a shift. Mm. Remove the garment of tears. Yes. Remove the garment of doubt. Amen. Remove the garment of self-pity. Pull yourself together, for God is about to do something. I said, God is about to I do something. I don't know who I'm talking to, but God is about to do something. Wherever you are, God is about to do something. So shall it be. It cannot be otherwise. otherwise. Find five people, give them a high five, prophetic high five. Your time of victory has come. Your moment has come. We receive it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please have a seat if you can. Let's start. He's a good God. He will do us all good today. It is with humility that I stand before all of you and the trust that God will find by grace an opportunity to use me as a vessel to communicate his grace and his word to all of you. I begin by giving you two or three announcements very quickly. This may be just a repetition of what you have already heard. This week is a week to many levels of victory because um, in this week we will be laying the remains, the natural remains of my spiritual mother to rest. It will happen on, on Friday. And um, we just ask the church to pray and uh, pray for the family that all may go according to the will of God. 
Jesus. It is uh, a very complicated time, but the Lord will strengthen all of us. Amen. Amen. And the same Friday, will I have an impartation night here? It is for disciples and leaders, but it's also open to all of us. It is a full night prayer. We'll meet here for the seven o'clock service. Then at after seven o'clock service, eleven o'clock, will I have that overnight? It will be full of grace and full of power. So I want to ask all of you to please come. Come get ready. I'll be here myself. And we'll just have a great, great moment in the presence of God. The women conference that is coming is a prophetic one. It's not merely an event. Amen. May I please say that uh, for a while we did not have any women conference or any such gathering. And the reason why we did not have it is not because we failed to understand the moment or the time where the world, especially our country, stop and think of women. But it's simply because we are a prophetic house. We do things not by routine. We do it because we can hear God. And uh, yesterday was not the time, and now is the time. Amen. Let me tell you, there will be a shift that will happen in the spiritual I realm and it. will manifest in the natural realm in our lives. I Every it. woman, young and old, you are welcome to come. From August the 9th, I think it's a Thursday, down till Sunday. You, you, you know the, the preachers that will, will be here, great men and women of God. You know, we have a, a Pastor Mia Wright who leads a good ministry. Um, and we have um, our precious Bishop uh, Marvin Sapp. We have uh, our own uh, bishops. The bishops we have here, I promise you, they are far more anointed. We receive it. Here, I'm not saying this to say it. I'm not saying it lightly. And I'm not saying they are far more anointed than other preachers here. But I'm telling you, they are of a different breed. I receive it. They came out of me. Amen. Are you hearing me? Amen. They, they are the manifestation of the, the, the last demonstration of the love of God on Page. planet Earth. Uh -huh. Through them, the world will know God loves us. The Bible said that, that the fivefold ministry are gift of Jesus Christ. So there are pastors, apostles, preachers, and so forth, teachers, and so forth. They are gift, and that those ones are gift. So it will be a great moment in the presence of God. Amen. I have a scheduled dinner with uh, my AL partner, and the reason why I'm doing dinners with them is just to try as much as I can to spend time with these fine men and women who understand the weight of serving God and say, Daddy, we'll not just love you with our words, but we'll come and jump into your word, into your work. We'll hold your hand so that you may keep those hands up like uh, Moses did. So those are men and women who have committed, you know, for the next six months to sow seed, ranging from 10,000 rand per month, 15,000 rand per month, uh, uh, 30,000 rand per month. And that we have a number of them in South Africa and a greater number of them all over the world. And I want to thank those who are AL partners around the world. I love you and I pray for you. I have grown to respect these men because they are not just a jolly jumpy, but that they are also men and women who are standing with me. So we may have what we have here. Family, serving God requires a lot of resources. You know, a lot of resources. In, the, in those days, you know, churches will be beneficiaries of uh, some grants, some government grants and uh, some support and so forth. But in our time, the church has to provide for the church. The church has to stand by itself. And a pastor cannot be the one providing financially and preaching uh, uh, spiritually and laying hands and then kneeling down. It doesn't work. He may do it, you know, for a while, but it's not sustainable. And uh, that's why uh, we will never take it for granted that men and women decided, Daddy, it is difficult for me, but I will join you. I understand your mission, I understand what you're doing, and I will join you. You have my respect. You already had my love. But now, you have my respect. Everyone has my love. 
but not everybody has my respect. You know, you have my sincere respect for that. And I pray that God bless you. I say the AL Amen. partners, you are directly in covenant with me. So I hold your hand. That's why some of you are receiving phone calls directly from me. Though you are here or even people overseas. Some of you are missing your call because your cell phones are permanently off. <laughs> but I'll try to call you again. And if you have not yet received a phone call from me directly, just wait for it. It's about to come, okay? Amen. So we serve God together. The Bible says whoever accepts a prophet as a prophet, he will get a reward of a prophet. And if they are prophets, they are prophets in different levels. A reward of a prophet speaks of uh, the, the reward from the anointing of the prophet. Right. The anointing flows like a fountain of waters. So if you have given me a glass of water for the ministry, so that uh, we may have this carpet, so that I may have this um, microphone. And Hallelujah. The Lord has served will bless you. Are you hearing me? Amen. When I preach here, I'm preaching with you. And may God bless you. So we'll have a dinner this week. It will not be for people who filled up the form. It will be for people who have been standing with me. Not people who stood with me when we began. No, people are standing with me. So if you are an AL partner, fulfill your pledge and stand with me. Don't get tired, please. I need you. Amen. Amen. I want to invite you to stand up again and lift your hand. Let us pray together. Eh Yahweh, Eh Yahweh, Kumbama, Eh Yahweh, Eh Yahweh, Kumbama Yahweh. Oh, Eh Yahweh, Eh Yahweh, Kumbama, Eh Yahweh. Yahweh, Kumbama Yahweh, 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 Kumbama, Yahweh, Oh, eh, Yahweh, eh, Yahweh, Kumbama, eh, Yahweh, eh, Yahweh, Kumbama Yahweh. Zambe kitoko, zambe nanga yo kumbama, eh Yahweh, eh Yahweh, kumbama Yahweh, 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 kumbama, eh Yahweh, eh Yahweh, oh eh Yahweh, eh Yahweh, kumbama, eh Yahweh, eh Yahweh, kumbama Yahweh. Yahweh, Yahweh, Kumbama, Yahweh, Makasia Lukao, Eh Yahweh, Kumbama, Zambena Alfe, Eh Yahweh, Kumbama, Yahweh, Yahweh, Omega. Hey Yahweh, hey Kumbama, hey Yahweh, hey Yahweh, Kumbama Yahweh, Yahweh, hey Bolingo, Zambe Kitoko, Yokumbama, Alpha Omega, Eh Yahweh, Kumbama Yahweh, 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 Kumbama, Eh Yahweh, 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 Eh Yahweh,
mama Alpha Omega Eh hey, Yahweh Ton mama Yahweh Yahweh for your kindness, for your love. Today, Lord, I believe you are here for your sons and your daughters. Your invisible and powerful hand will go through the crowd. Touch every man and every woman seeking you, desiring a touch from you. Oh, God. Oh, yes. You are the king of glory. You are the healer.
love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Bless you, big heart. Bless you, Lord. Bless you. Speak to us, O oh God, and do us good. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. Please have a seat. May the Lord be gracious to all of us. Receive it. Hallelujah. Amen. Sokot Oboshia. Blessed be God. Blessed be God. I read with you from the book of Acts, chapter 5, from verse 12 down to verse 16. I invite you to read with me at the count of 3, 1, 2, and 3. And through the hands of the apostles, I read again for a better audition. I am reading from the book of Acts 5, verse 12 down to verse 16. And through the hands of the apostles, many signs and wonders were done among the people. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. Yet none of the rest dare join them. But the people esteemed them highly. And the believers were increasing, increasingly added to the church, multitude of both men and women, so that they brought the sick out into the street and laid them on beds and couches that at least the shadow of Peter passing by might fall on some of them. As a multitude gathered from the surrounding cities to Jerusalem, bringing sick people and those who were tormented by unclean spirit. And they were, some of them, they were all healed. Lift your hand. Say, Lord. Lord. Heal us all. Heal us all. Now, family, I want you to pay attention to this short presentation of the word of God. If you're watching us live, I want you to connect as if you are present physically here. If you are in the church, in the extension, or in the basement, or wherever you may be, outside the auditorium, connect as if I'm speaking to nobody else but you. If you are sitting here today, I want you to know it's a setup. He wanted you to be here and take this word as your word. May something good happen to all of us today. I receive it. There is a cry in the spiritual realm. And there is a movement happening. What is happening in the spiritual realm cannot be stopped by any. That's right. The structure of men on earth cannot stop it. The organization, be it religious or non-religious, will not be able to stop it. There is a wind that is blowing. And the prophetic is here to announce that which God has already set and set in motion in the spiritual realm. There are men and women on earth who have heard the sound of what is happening in the spiritual atmosphere. Men and women on earth who have been sanctified, set aside, booked, uh, uh, put for this purpose to announce and make way for that which the Lord has already set in motion. The Lord is rebuilding his church, is rebuilding his church is rebuilding his church and many a times this may look like confusing many a times the church of men is not necessarily the church of god that's why in our time we can see and hear god knocking in the door of the church and calling the church out of the church we are going back to the church of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You see, in the 
church of our Lord Jesus Christ, race does not matter. Hallelujah. In the church of our Lord Jesus Christ, your social class does not matter. Right. In the church of our Lord Jesus Christ, your education background does not matter. In the church of our Lord Jesus Christ, who you are, for how long you've been here, does not matter. The church of our Lord Jesus Christ is not a weak church, is not a defeated church, is not a beaten church, is a strong church, is a church that walks in power. The church of our Lord Jesus Christ is the reflection of his glory. When the church of our Lord Jesus Christ will be restored in its all splendor, the men and women who walk on earth, this planet, will all go on the knees and say, the Lord is God. The Lord is God. In the church of our Lord Jesus Christ, there is no division. In the church of our Lord Jesus Christ, we do not backbite one another. Amen. In the church of our Lord Jesus Christ, there is no comp competition. Amen. In the church of our Lord Jesus Christ, brothers will stand for brothers. Sisters will stand for sisters. Irrespective of the fact that uh, what you do, I don't understand. What you do is not as I do it. But my brother is my brother. We are going back to the true church of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Where greed is not the motive that m leads men and women to do certain things. In the church of our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, there is peace. Amen. Amen. I receive it. Am I speaking to somebody? Amen. And family, please hear me. The church of our Lord Jesus Christ is a place of solution. Is a refuge. Is a place where men and women will come from across the globe to find dwelling. Is a, is a well. They come to drink from it. God is restoring the church. I receive it. I say God is restoring Amen. the church. The text that we read is a clear example of a prototype of the church that Jesus Christ is coming to restore. It is a prototype because this is the first church. When I'm speaking about the church, I'm not just speaking about the spiritual church, the body of Christ. I'm talking about the spiritual church, the body of Christ, but in, in its form here on earth. Men and women sanctified, called by him. That's what I'm referring to. Are you hearing me? Amen. And here I just gave you a prototype of the church that Jesus Christ is restoring. This is the first church. It is also known as the primitive church. It is the first church after our Lord Jesus Christ. It was led by men and women that uh, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, while on earth, trained himself. He trained Peter, he trained John, he trained James and the rest. This is the first church. But before I go through this, I want you to pay attention. The church that Jesus Christ is restoring will be greater in glory, greater in Amen. splendor than the primitive church. Amen. I try to say it again here. The first church was full of grace and full of glory. But the latter glory will be greater Hallelujah. than the former. Amen. The church of our Lord Jesus Christ that is pulling and restoring will be greater than the former church. Amen. Now, the, the difficulty we have is that right now, the current church of our Lord Jesus Christ on earth is far behind compared to the primitive church. Now, if the church currently in its form is way behind than the first church, I wonder how are we going to get to the church that the Lord has oh, for us. It's a church that is greater in glory, in power than the former church. I am here to give you a glimpse so I will stand on the ground of the prototype which is the first church. The Bible says here in the first, first church, after Jesus Christ left ascended to heaven the spirit of the living god came he had forbidden his disciples men and men that he had trained himself for over three years he has forbidden them to go for ministry he said remain in jerusalem until you receive power when the spirit comes it is only the spirit of god that had to equip them for that which it was set for them are you hearing me the holy ghost brings a holy ghost 
He said, when the Holy Ghost comes, you will have a Holy Ghost. You will go and serve him. So that when they began the ministry, and here in chapter 5, the Bible says, through the hands of the apostles, many signs and wonders were done among the people. The church, the first church, was a church of signs and wonders. The first church was a church of signs and wonders. That's right here, I'm speaking to the world. The first church was not a talking church. Amen. The first church was not a social movement. The first church was not a moral club. The ch first church was not a gathering of good people who speaks good things, linking it to God, even when God is not interested. Hmm. The first church was a church of signs and wonders. Now, if you have to know what God is about to do oh, in the Jesus. future, restoring the church, you must know that we will begin to see more of the first church. I say more of the first church. When I say more of the first church, I'm talking about the signs and the wonders. If you are not prepared to go along with God, You'll be left back out there. Amen. But let me tell you, we are marching towards something greater. I receive it. We are marching towards something bigger. Amen. A church of signs and wonder. Amen. I pity someone who will say, I'm not prepared. I pity someone who says, I don't believe this. I pity someone who sees the signs and wonders as a manipulation of a man. Ah, I pity those who believe that the signs and wonders are all from the enemy. Some magic powers meant to confuse and blind the church. I pity you because we are going there. You like it or not. The Lord is restoring signs and wonders in the church. I say again, the Lord is restoring signs and wonders in the church. Thank you, Jesus. Through the hands of the apostles many signs and wonders many signs and wonders were done among the people you take note that uh, god in the first church had his own servant and that through the hand miracles take place there are always people appointed for you amen, amen. i said there are always people appointed for you it is indispensable for you to know those who are appointed for you. This is a make or break for your destiny. Not discovering who is he that the Lord has really appointed for me. Because he becomes your point of contact. He is your facilitator. He becomes that well you drink from. Are you hearing me? Through the hands of the apostles. There must be an apostle, a covering, a source that the Lord has linked your umbilical cord to. And that through his hand, signs and wonders will be made possible in your Amen. life. Today, there will be signs and wonders right in it. this house, right in this place in the name of Jesus. I receive. The first church was a church of signs and wonders. The first church was not weak. And the Bible says, and they were all with one accord in the Solomon's porch. The first church was a church united. United in spirit, united in heart. We got to understand as the body of Christ, unless we forge ourselves in unity, we'll not be able to stand and fight the devil that is attacking us from every corner. When you see somebody standing against another, don't join him. Irrespective of his argument, don't join him. If you see somebody beat in social media or in a public platform standing against another, don't join him. It is a demonic spirit camouflaging itself uh, uh, as uh, those who are concerned. We are just concerned. We are not agreeing. Please listen to me. If you find a brother attacking a brother, don't join him. If you find a brother attacking a man of God, don't join him. If you find a church Amen. attacking a church, don't join it. Amen. Are you hearing me? Amen. We may be different. We may do things differently. We may not always agree in how we do things. But we must know we all have one master. We all serve the same Hallelujah. Lord. We run to the same purpose. Glory to Jesus. Are you hearing me? Amen. The first church 
was mature in unity. Unity is a sign of maturity because unity requires humility. Unity requires love. Where there is love and humility, unity will be easy. Amen. Are you hearing me? Because you see, sometimes for unity's sake, you will have to lower yourself. That's right. And if there is no humility, it will be a problem. It will be a doctrine of it is mine. I know better. I know well. God speaks to me also. Are you hearing me? Let me tell you, a bicycle does not move if both pedals go up. That's right. For a bicycle to move forward, when one pedal go up, the oh, other no, one must go sister. down. Amen. So it takes the heart of humility through maturity for that to be established. The first church was a church of unity. Let me tell you, hallelujah, ministries, if your brother has hurt you, forgive him. If your sister has hurt you, forgive her. Amen. Forgive one another. Live in love. Because you see, love tolerates. Love accepts. Love embraces. Love forgives Amen. when we do not forgive. We demand justice, fire on everyone that has just made a mistake around us. There will be no uni unity. We need unity again. Amen. The church of God has to be united again. The Bible says, yet none of the rest joined them. But the people esteemed them highly. Talking about the apostles and people in the first church. The first church had the respect of the community. The first church had the respect of the community of men and women out there. They were highly esteemed. And this is one of the things that the devil is after when it comes to the church today. To destroy the reputation of the church and pull everyone down. They have pulled everybody in the same line. They are all thieves. They are all manipulators. They are all brainwashed. They are all uh, 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 illiterate. Why? Because the enemy does not want the church to be esteemed. But the devil like it or not. We will impose ourselves. Amen. Are you hearing me? Amen. The Bible carries on and say, the believers were increasingly added to the Lord multitude of both men and women. I want you to understand, it is the will of God that all may be saved. It is the failure of the church that we are not able to get a great harvest of souls. It is never the will of God that you may be stuck with a few when multitude are dying. Are you hearing me? There is a grace flowing from this altar. It's a grace of multitude. Amen, I receive it. There is a grace flowing from this altar. We will empty hell. We will fill up heaven. In Jesus' name. I want you to know you are a vessel chosen by God. Amen. Your neighbor cannot go to hell. Your Amen. uncle cannot go to hell. Amen. Your auntie cannot go to hell. Amen. Your children cannot go to hell. Amen. Your siblings cannot go to hell. Amen. We will empty hell and we will fill up heaven. heaven. It is the will of God that a multitude may be added, both men and women, to the church. This world has no hope. The only hope we have is God. Hallelujah. Unless we present God, there will be no hope. Yes. Brothers and sisters, be a vessel, a conduit of good news. Go out there and speak about your Lord. Amen. Speak about Jesus Christ with boldness. Let the whole world know that there is no hope out there. There is no solution. Jesus Christ is the only solution. The first church is, was an aggressive church. The Bible says, increasingly, a great multitude was added. Soon we'll have no space here. We Am I saying soon? It. We, we already have no space it. here. Yes. Am I saying soon? We have no space here. Amen. We, we're trying to build a 50,000 seat. But I'm seeing already 50,000 with four services full. It's full. We receive it. Are you hearing me? We receive it. Before we go to heaven, we, we will empty receive. hell. Who am I talking to? The I said we will empty hell. 
What am I saying? I say we will empty hell. Who is with me? I say who is with me? We are with you, men of God. We will go to heaven with our brothers, our sisters, with our family members, with members of our community. We will pull them all to the glory of our Lord Jesus. Amen. Please have a seat. The first church was increasingly big. You see, you do not grow the work of God because you feel like it's your little uh, 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 kingdom. You know, it's your, 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 your area of rulership. We have a queen here. A queen, please stand up. Don't, don't, don't run. We have a queen. She's a queen from, from where again? In Limpopo. She's a queen. She, she has a throne. The father was a king. So, she, she's not, uh, she's a queen. Glory to Jesus. Hear me. I know you're also queen in your house. But you see, your, your space of rulership is small. Is that flat or apartment? She's leading a kingdom. Glory to Are Jesus. Are you hearing me? Now, thank you. But please understand, you don't grow the church to have a small kingdom like a queen. Are you hearing me? Where you feel like, are you big because, no, you are growing the kingdom of God with the sole purpose of emptying hell and filling up heaven. Amen. It is not to do with you. It's not so that you may look big. No. Let me tell you, if your neighbor will go to hell, the Lord